Welcome to episode 12 of No BSTS. And in this one, we're going to take a look at TypeScript classes and in particular, how they extend on the existing JavaScript class infrastructure by allowing for implements and also member visibility. So public, protected and private. So if you don't know a lot yet about JavaScript classes, you might be a little bit lost here. You're welcome to stick around, but I'm just going to jump right into it. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new file, call it database.ts. So I've heard about a lot of people getting this as an interview question, which is create a NoSQL style, simple in-memory database. And then they kind of build on top of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is define the interface we want for our database. And it's going to have a getter. which when given an ID is going to return a string, and then it's going to have a setter, which given an ID is going to set that value. And it's going to return void. OK, so to implement this, I'm going to create a new class. I'll call it in-memory database. And it's going to implement that interface. And now currently it's got the red squiggly under it because it doesn't implement that interface. It doesn't do anything yet. So I need to copy across, get and set, and then create some implementations. And I'm still getting the red squiggly because this isn't actually returning a string. So let me do that. So now how am I going to implement this? Well, I need to create a member variable, call it DB. And it's going to be of a type record. One of the awesome utility types. And it's going to take a key and a value type. So in this case, the key type is going to be a string because that's the ID, IDs of type string. And the value type is also going to be type string because that's what we're going to send back. So we've got this DB and now we want to initialize it. So we'll just initialize it to an empty object. And now we can start using it. So in this case, for the getter, I'm going to just return this dot DB and then give it the ID. And then for the setter, I'm going to set this.db for that ID to that value. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, let's try it out. So I'm going to create a myDB, I'm going to instantiate an in-memory database, and then I'm going to set a value. We'll call it foo is the key, and bar is the value. And then we'll just console log out from the getter. So we need to get foo now that we've set it. OK, let's try it out. So let's do uh, let's see what we're expecting. We're expecting at this point for console log, just say bar, because that's the value of of that. So let's try it out. MPX TS node database. And look at that bar. Super cool, right? But I can also do my DB dot and then just go in there and set it myself. So I'm going to say foo equals Baz to heck with the fact that in memory database wants to control this. I'm going to do it myself. So let's see what happens here. So now it says Baz, which means that I've successfully overwritten that value without in memory database actually knowing that I did that. It's probably a bad thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the member visibility of DB to be a private member. Now, there's three different member visibility settings. There's private, which means that only this class can see it. There is protected, which means that this class or any of its descendants can see it and change it. And then there is public, which is what it is right now, which basically is just a free for all. So we're just going to go with private right now. And now we can see that we get a little red squiggly and it's telling us that the property DB is private and only accessible within the class of in-memory database. So true. OK, so that's great. And if we were to try and run it, we would get the same thing. Wouldn't run our code. And there you go. OK, so let me comment that out. And so that's member visibility. But I do want to show extension. So I'm going to make a persistible interface. And persistible means that you can read and write your state from a string. So the first thing you need to do is say, allow for a save to string. 
and it's going to output a string. And then we're going to restore from string. And that's going to take a string and return void. OK, so let's create a persistable in memory database. So I'm going to define a new class, call it persistent memory DB. And it's going to extend in memory database. That's pretty cool, right? And now it gets everything that in memory database does, which is basically just these, you know, get and set like that. But now I want to extend it. I want to implement that additional interface and make it persistible. So I'm going to implement again persistible. But of course, I get the red squiggly there because I haven't actually implemented these functions. So let me go do that. And this should be super easy, right? All I got to do from here is just return json.stringify and then just give the db. Oh, oh wait, hold up. OK, so now I can't access db even from persistent memory DB, which extends in memory database because this is private. So if I were to change this to protected, now I can see it because I'm a descendant of that class and therefore I can, I can see that. And now we'll go and restore. So I'm gonna say my DB is a JSON parse of that stored state coming in. And let's try it out. Let's uh, let's use a persistent memory DB instead of our in memory DB. And in addition to doing that console log of the get foo, I'm going to do a console log of save string and see what will come out. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, good. So we got bar, which is this console log here, and then we got foo bar, which is the JSON packaged up version of what's in the the db object okay and let's just finish this up here let's go and make another db and restore into it so uh, let's see i'm going to go create my db2 and i'm going to take the current saved state right there and i'm going to do in my db2 a restore from string that saved JSON payload. And then my console log from my DB2, the get of foo. All right, let's give it a tr another try there. So we should get just bar twice. And there we go. Bar, 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 bar. Okay, cool. That's awesome. But if I were to go and set this to uh, DB1 bar after I'd saved it, let's, uh, and then let me console log that too. Yeah, we can see that we've kind of frozen the state when we saved it here and then we restored it back here. And so we didn't keep up with all the state changes. And it also shows you that those two database objects are completely independent of each other. OK, so that was a quick look at both implements and also member visibility in TypeScript. In the next one, we're going to make it generic. And that is super cool. I'm really excited. Can't wait to see you there. Of course, in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comment section down below or jump on my Discord server. In the meantime, feel free to like and share this video with your friends. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And of course, ring that bell and you'll be notified the next time a no BSTS episode arrives.